All right, well, good morning, everyone. My name's Quinn Bailey. I work with OpenMake Software. Yeah, my name is not Tracy Reagan. <laughs> I'm standing in for Tracy Reagan. So today I'd like to talk a little bit about how we at OpenMake Software use Perl in our uh, DevOps, dynamic DevOps solution. Uh, I uh, subtitled this, How to Hack Your Way to a Comprehensive Build and Deploy Solution. Um, so before we get, uh, well, DevOps is, is um, you know, a buzzword, a hot word right now, and maybe it's uh, overplayed, overhyped. Uh, and, and really from, wow, that is getting distorted. Uh, really from our perspective, uh, this is a new old thing, right? This is a common problem that's been going on for a long time, the disconnect between development and operations. And uh, while with uh, web technologies, web applications, there are new challenges with that. Uh, these, these are a lot of the old uh, challenges and old problems uh, that have been around, uh, you know, through various uh, systems, various types of applications for eons and eons. So <clears throat> I, I, I like to say, you know, DevOps is, is uh, in some sense um, kind of a no-brainer sort of idea and basically the idea of left hand meet, meet the right hand, <laughs> right? Uh, these two parts of the organization need to be coordinated uh, in order to, to, to work effectively, although the regular state of things is, is pretty dysfunctional uh, in a lot of organizations. Uh, so just to give you some background, as to what open, uh, uh, who, who we are, who, you know, what OpenMake software is. Uh, we've been at this uh, uh, quite a while. Uh, really our primary uh, focus or, or our roots where we come from uh, is in build management. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's a little bit different when we take on uh, web applications, uh, languages that aren't compiled. <laughs> Uh, which seem to be uh, uh, fast, uh, uh, such such as Perl, uh, but uh, um, <clears throat> at any rate, uh, build management is really where our roots are at, and managing the creation of uh, and deployment of applications from uh, source control. Uh, we've been at this probably the company's been around for about 17 years. So it's, uh, as I said, uh, we, we've sort of been at this a while. So, um, and, and I think, you know, while DevOps is, is kind of a, uh, a hot buzzword that maybe even, uh, you know, makes some people a little ill to, to, <laughs> to hear it over and over, uh, especially, um, you know, when companies are, are, are using it trying to sell you something. But the basic idea is, is really nothing new, uh, you know, in other disciplines other than software development. Uh, you know, the idea of, a, of, of systems engineering, uh, a, a unified discipline, someone who oversees, well, maybe not someone, but part of the organization, a part of the process that oversees uh, you know, taking newly developed products and guiding their uh, their move into into production uh, is not really a new uh, not really a new idea. And just to give you a little bit about our philosophy behind this, you know, my sense of it is, is uh, of it is is you know you want people with uh, I forgot the term that I was going to use. Uh, you, you want uh, generalists in this role 
people with a, a, a broad knowledge of, of you know, what goes on during development and the sort of challenges that are faced uh, when uh, newly developed products go into, into production. And, you know, it's, this person isn't really, you know, a superhero, isn't really uh, necessarily even, um, you know, the, the brightest developer, uh, the brightest technical mind at an organization, but really just a pragmatic problem solver and I think just as important as being a pragmatic problem solver, um, people in this role need access to, to resources to actually <laughs> fix things when things go wrong. So DevOps is, you know, buzzword du jour and it's not, uh, it's not a silver bullet, um, but, you know, neither are any of the uh, other good practice, um, well, best, uh, good, good practices in, in, in software engineering aren't, aren't necessarily, uh, none of them are, are silver bullet, uh, just like Agile and, and Scrum, but, uh, people who understand and, and, and buy into the basic philosophy uh, and incorporate it well into their organization, you know, it, it, it will give, give you results if you, uh, um, if you work at it. So, uh, Um, so, and I, and I think uh, one important thing about, uh, about this is, you know, to some people, DevOps, there might actually be a methodology or uh, uh, a, e even a, a tool set prescribed for that. Uh, I mean, we like to think that, that we have a great tool set for it, but um, really, I don't, I don't think of it as, as uh, DevOps is, is really a methodology or prescription for any particular one way of doing things. And it's, uh, 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 as I said, maybe uh, a bit overhyped, but it's, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things. It's, it's what, the, uh, what folks are talking about. Uh, what uh, you know we see people talking about in our market uh, and you know we uh, we feel that uh, w we've got uh, something to to say something to add to that conversation um, so you know the basic idea of, of having uh, well <clears throat> so uh, as far as what what a tool set might enable an organization to do. Uh, I, uh, I think of, uh, you know, these three uh, as, as big, um, uh, the, the, the major points uh, that, that you want to hit with, uh, with a DevOps tool set. So uh, there should be, it should for allow for enhanced collaboration between developers and, um, and operations. Uh, the, the actual business of building, packaging, deploying, configuring uh, an application, um, you know, you should never do uh, more work than you need to, so maximize re reuse of those, uh, uh, you know, if, you, if, it, if it's going to be, uh, if you do have scripts, well, you pretty much have to have scripts, but uh, organize them in a way that you can maximize reuse of them. And then as the process is, is moving along, uh, provide as much insight uh, as to, you know, what's going into a release. Um, you know, what's everything, you know, is there a single place we can go to find everything we need to know about this release? Um, or this individual component. Uh, so what, um, for example, you know, 
results from any automated tests, uh, just general logging of, of the build or package or configuration process, uh, and you know, any sort of additional reporting, uh, such as maybe dependency analysis um, or uh, since we work a lot with uh, financial and insurance companies uh, having reporting for, for uh, audit capabilities for, for audit requirements is, is also very important from our perspective. Um, so I'll try to minimize uh, the, 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 the marketing uh, mumbo-jumbo, but <laughs> as I know, uh, technical folks don't, uh, don't care too much for that. But uh, the basic idea of, of, of having a dynamic Dev DevOps suite from, from our perspective is to enable continuous integration, continuous deployment, uh, and, you know, make this a, uh, a regular habit. Uh, you know, build, deploy, configure early, uh, you know, to real, to real environments, maybe not necessarily, well, production uh, for sure, but, uh, you know, obviously starting with, uh, with a test or QA environment. And, um, do that early and often. Failures are going to happen. Uh, that's why you know we practice this and 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 uh, you know make uh, deployment to production uh, by by doing this often. You know make that a a lower risk event so that when failures happen, you're prepared uh, to to fix it to to, to redeploy um, and have that not be. Um, uh, you know, a big disaster. <laughs> so, as part of this, uh, what our what our suite uh, allows for is uh, dynamic uh, build automation and acceleration, and then also dynamic package and deploy automation, and then uh, also provisioning of uh, uh, machines uh, in either a, a private or, or a public cloud. That's the, that's the general idea. So basically we, we want, uh, you know, we want speed, we want consistency, control the process, insight into what's going on uh, at, at any given point process uh, so that there can be straightforward handoff between the software development teams and IT operations uh, and that, you know, uh, the definition of these processes are, are standardized and centralized in some fashion uh, so that uh, at any given point uh, a, a person can uh, look at the definition of a, of a given uh, deployment, a given build, and uh, see into uh, what goes into that process. And uh, I think now also the, the capability that we have, um, not just our company, but all of us have to, to use these, these cloud environments, these virtualized environments, uh, gives us an opportunity to, to control and, uh, and line up the uh, <coughs> uh, development and production environments in such a way uh, that you avoid uh, this this drift between the uh, between the environments that that can often happen when uh, well when using uh, 
in the old uh, way of doing things when, when using physical servers. So. Okay, so as far as what we specifically do that's different or we, we like to think uh, of as different, uh, the architecture of our system is basically for any, any of these build, deployment, package, configure processes, uh, uh, there's basically a, a template, a model, uh, objects in a, in, a, in a sense that you can instantiate to do those different tasks. Uh, what we refer to them as uh, build and deployment services and the instantiations uh, we refer to as, as target definitions. I think that um, just on the, the, the words themselves should be fairly intuitive. But uh, basically the templates uh, are how you maximize reuse and, and, and make the system uh, dynamic, uh, make it able to respond to change uh, quickly across all your applications, you know, make a change to the template, that, uh, can, that change will then propagate uh, through, throughout uh, all the applications that use that template. Uh, and, and really, in our experience, um, you know, even large enterprises with uh, scores of, of applications using different technologies and platforms, uh, in, in some cases, only need a handful of these templates to, to define their, their, their build and deploy process. Um, so once you have these templates, uh, the other two important ingredients are um, central server, uh, the store of, of the templates and, and uh, the, con the various configuration, uh, environmental and uh, target configuration data, uh, and then an agent on the actual machine where, where the build or the deploy is going to happen, uh, and then a rules engine to, to process the templates to say, okay, given this input, what do I go and what do I go and do? The, the, the rules engine is, is also pretty important because it, uh, it's doing dependency analysis and scanning and, and then reporting uh, after the process is done. So, I'm sure some of you are wondering where <laughs> Perl comes in. Well, for us, uh, Perl is the glue. Perl is what we make our templates out of. And since our rules engine is written in C, and this, this tight relationship that Perl shares with C, um, uh, that's, that's why we, we chose Perl uh, to, to make our templates. Uh, so it's Perl is the glue or the, the duct tape, if you prefer. Um, basically, the way this works, our rules engine populates uh, template scripts that we have, the template scripts being written in Perl, with configuration data that it reads from the central server, uh, and then combines that with scanning that it does on the file system based on uh, the, the target uh, the target configuration data that, that, that you pass to it. Uh, and then what it actually populates in our Perl templates are our, our own custom uh, Perl objects for managing files and paths and options, uh, you know, usually in lists or associative arrays. And then uh, the templates process all that data uh, so that, uh, well, that, those, those Perl objects allow the templates to process the data in a way that it's, uh, uh, you know, we can present it then to whatever uh, actually is going to, to do the, the build, you know, the compiler uh, in sort of, uh, as I said, our roots of, of, of uh, thinking come from, from Build management, but of course, uh, you know, if you need to to package uh, or deploy or uh, you know configure properties files, uh, 
This is all um, done in these Perl templates. Uh, so, mm -hmm. the argument for C. Um, I think probably. I mean, I, 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 I didn't write the system, <laughs> um, so it's it's hard to say. The uh, I would say legacy in the sense that uh, when the when the tool was first written, Perl was still kind of young. Um, I mean, right? The company was started. I guess maybe I don't know my history well enough. <laughs> From you know, from our perspective, uh, you know the the, the folks that uh, that developed it, uh, you know, back in 1995, um, I think Pearl was still kind of young, and uh, and you know the the, the architect of the, of, of the system was uh, familiar and comfortable with with C. I think speed uh, is an is an important uh, part of it, uh, although you know. Pearl does pretty good on that uh, a lot of times. Uh, but yeah, I think legacy would be the other th reason, just that's, that's how it was designed to, to begin with. But certainly the, the flexibility uh, that, that Pearl gives you, I think, makes it a um, very appropriate choice for, for the templates because, right, you know, these, these tools that we have to interact with to, to build and package and deploy and configure, it's it's always it's it's in constant flux. Um, so, besides uh, besides Perl being the glue, though, uh, you can you can also think of it bes sort of besides what the rules engine does. Uh, you can think of Perl as as the workhorse uh, of the application because it's it's doing most of the process ex execution and file I/O and then. Uh, you know, collection and formatting of, of the output of these processes to uh, to pass it then to our uh, logging and, and reporting uh, daemon, which is also written in C. <clears throat> um, let's see. Uh, yeah, so you know, we have to we have to execute uh, various processes. And you know, read and write from files, um, and 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 format this this data, this output, and uh, Perl's uh, an, a natural fit for that. So uh, from this point, uh, there's not uh, too much specifically about Perl. Uh, at this point, right? We have to. The the design of our tool is to support all manner of uh, applications and uh, platforms, um, and um, you know a lot of that is <coughs> uh, is sort of typical. Uh, well, typical. Uh, maybe in a, I guess the, the word might be legacy. Uh, C and C++ builds and, and Java um, and compiled compiled applications uh, uh, compared to um, uh, newer web apps that are that uh, don't use a compiled language that are using interpreted language um, but the basic idea is we have this this uh, command center that that handles sort of basic uh, execution interaction with the, the remote agents um, and this is the the central location and the place that we define uh, all of our integrations and templates that are that are used um, uh, by this by the um, build system well DevOps system um, you can see I, I, I still uh, think of us as, as, as a build tool, uh, even though we're, we're fast moving into, uh, uh, you know, DevOps as, as being sort of an integrated uh, discipline that includes a lot more than just build. Mm -hmm. What's the, implementation of the, build? 
the implementation architecture. So the, uh, well, the, yeah, okay. The, 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 so the server that, that manages um, all that is, uh, is a, is a uh, it's written in Java. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a, a Java web app. Um, and then the, the GUI, uh, there's a web GUI um, that we use uh, GWT for, so also Java. Uh, and then there's an Eclipse. Uh, there's also an Eclipse GUI uh, because we do integrations with, uh, with Eclipse um, and also just have a standalone rich client uh, that's Eclipse based. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, well, there's, there's only so many components, right? So the, the server and the remote agent uh, are written in Java. As I said before, the rules engine and, and, and the logging uh, and reporting daemon are written in C. And the glue that holds, holds it together is Perl. Um, so Mojo is just sort of, in some sense, a, uh, well, we, we, we term it uh, workflow engine. It's, uh, it's analogous to something like Hudson or Cruise Control. Just, you know, execute scripts, execute uh, processes. So Meister, what Meister is providing is uh, the, the dynamic uh, aspect of, of the build process, uh, these template scripts that, you know, the template defines. <clears throat> how, you know, for an, for an organization, how we build, uh, you know, a web sphere or web service or something like that. Um, and so that allows you, that gives you control over, over the process, over, over the logic that drives the build in such a way that you can quickly respond to, to any changes. Um, and, you know, given that you're, you're, you're taking, in some cases, hundreds and, uh, or, well, I guess it depends, uh, but many, many scripts and centralizing them into to one location and, and reducing the number of scripts significantly, that's going to simplify the handoff between teams uh, because instead of, you know, these one-off script-driven processes, you have these uh, model-driven uh, model processes that are uh, doing your build. And... Uh, you know, one, one thing that uh, I haven't mentioned yet uh, that I think is pretty important, uh, because of the dependency analysis uh, that we also do during this process, that allows us to do an incremental build to do uh, and, and to accelerate builds because you only need to build what, what changed. Uh, and, uh, and a similar thing uh, happens on the deployment side, right? We can, we can do an incremental deploy uh, because we know uh, what changed and what the impact of that change was. Uh, we have integrations uh, with the ID, with various ID, well, various, Eclipse and, and Visual Studio <laughs> um, uh, to, to allow this, uh, this process to, to happen inside the IDE and then easily move to an environment uh, where, where that happens outside the IDE. Um, and you, you don't necessarily need to use our workflow, uh, the, you know, the Mojo command center for, uh, for driving this process. You can you know, plug, plug us into a tool like Hudson. So yeah, as I was just saying, because we have incremental binary management and we're managing those dependency relationships, that allows us uh, for, for our deploy plus uh, product to uh, do incremental deploy and uh, you know provide insight in, insight to uh, to to the deploy process. Um, so deployment uh, is. Um, Basically, it, it, Deploy Plus product is a similar story to our build product. There are templates uh, and a rules engine, and uh, you you know the ins 
the way to do your deploys is basically to instantiate one of the templates uh, for deployment. And uh, uh, because it's using, because the, these templates and, uh, and, and uh, the tool interacts with the central uh, knowledge base, uh, we call it the knowledge base server uh, of this information. Uh, all the information about de deployments are, are uh, stored in a, in a central uh, server location. Uh, and, you know, you have logs and, and reports for, for uh, the deployment process. The last piece of the puzzle, uh, and this is one that's uh, still uh, developing uh, for us, uh, is what we call the Cloud Builder part of the product. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's become uh, apparent to us, you know, since we've been taking this approach for some time, uh, that, um, you know, using uh, cloud or virtual uh, images of, of machines uh, to, to manage your environment, uh, that's a similar sort of approach, right, to, to the templates for the, um, for the build and, and deployment process. We, we can have uh, a spin up in images in, in whichever environment we need to quickly and, and, and be, be sure that, uh, that that image that we're using is, is, is what we want to be using. Uh, and then, you know, basically, you know, spin up a, uh, a cloud image uh, do a build, do uh, automated tests, do uh, do deployments uh, to that environment, and uh, and then you know spin it spin it down when it's when it's not needed. Uh, so so whereas uh, organizations might have previously needed um, uh, you know a handful of uh, physical servers to handle handle all of this, uh, you know it can be done on one. Uh, server or uh, uh, well, yeah, you know, one physical server and then uh, uh, virtual environments uh, on that on that hardware. Uh, so I think I don't. Uh, there's not too much more that. Uh, I think is 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 relevant uh, for you guys, but uh, I don't know any questions at at this point. I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of people in that space. Are you right. compatible with? Interfacing with? You're thinking about replacing what you have with one of those. So, uh, what actually we provide is is a front end and an integration to uh, a product by CA that. Uh, is uh, that that they've re released recently? Well, I guess it's now been about three years, it's, and they keep changing the name of it. Uh, I think they originally called it uh, what did they call it? Uh, virtual automation, and then they they sort of integrated it with their other tools for managing physical servers. And now they call it server automation, I think. So. Basically, what what we provide with Cloud Builder is is uh, a front end, and also you know integration with that, such that you know our data that that we collect and manage can be uh, passed on to uh, those cloud environments. Uh, let's see. I think that's the last slide. Um, yeah, in, in, any other questions at this point? Mm -hmm. You say you integrate with node management for you know, traditional sort of compiled languages. Right. But you also support the sort of language like Go and Python or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right, so what, um, 
basically that that part of uh, of the the product is still still developing and and basically when uh, when we have a new customer uh, we work with them to help uh, define uh, e either to to define um, new processes for that or or reuse existing templates right you know basically every customer that 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 we work with uh, we you know we gain more knowledge of, of of different types of applications different types of platforms and and how you build applications and deploy applications for for, for that uh, that language that that platform um, so we provide uh, as part of our, our knowledge base, uh, right, existing templates for uh, for for doing build and, and deployments um, for for all the, basically all the tools that we know how to how to work with. And if we don't know how to work with a, a tool or, or or a platform already, we work with the customer to to define that so that you know they're they have a standardized uh, process and that and that they're not writing uh, one-off scripts. Uh, for that process. You know, um, to be honest, uh, no. <laughs> uh, we, uh, uh, I think, just because of the fact that uh, you know we we haven't had a customer that 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 uses Perl in that way. So, again, this maybe it wasn't too clear from 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 the get go, but. This talk is more about how, you know, we use Perl in our commercial product rather than, you know, how, I mean, it's, I would like to, to be able to give you guys all the answers for, 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 for how to use our, our tool uh, to, to, to work with, with Perl applications uh, to, you know, to build and, and, de and, and deploy them. But really what we have is a, is a framework that could be, could be used, could be applied uh, to to Perl applications, um, but we 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 don't yet have uh, templates for 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 Perl applications. Um, though we do rely on on Perl ourselves. So if there's uh, if there's nothing else, I think that's it for me. Um, hope I at least uh, gave you gave you guys some ideas on. Uh, I mean, I think um, even if, if if you weren't to use uh, our tool, some of the ideas that 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 we use in the tool, uh, you know, having templates for the process, and, and you know, I realize there are other tools that do similar things to this um, but um, you know in 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 the history of, of of our company we've we've encountered a lot of people who who do actually do use Perl for their for their own uh, homegrown uh, custom solutions uh, and it seems a natural fit um, because of the flexibility and uh, uh, you know Speed and uh, sort of low low level management interaction with with uh, the OS. Um, so yeah, besides um, besides the templates, the the you know that 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 we have written in Perl, I think the other um, major components are are the the central server, the remote agents, and uh, some sort of some sort of rules engine. Uh, I mean, you probably could uh, use or or abuse make uh, or uh, ant or uh, some other uh, build tool um, to to as a rules engine uh, to interact with with templates in this way. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I, I didn't uh, speak to that uh, directly, but uh, part of uh, part of the whole process 
uh, is naturally going to be some interaction with version control and really the, uh, the, the, the value that we add in that space, you know, besides just going and calling uh, a version control tool to get uh, updates or uh, uh, that you might need, is because we're actually managing the process that compiles uh, or builds or, or packages the application, uh, we can interact with the version control tool to uh, to determine exactly you know what version uh, of a of a file uh, from version control went into uh, you know a given binary a given uh, uh, release of an application. So uh, yeah, thanks thanks uh, for right yeah the. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, the, the, the type of report uh, that I, I'm referring to uh, is what we call build audit report, and uh, uh, that's, that's another rep um, uh, we're, we're, we're able to provide uh, build audit diff reports, uh, you know, by, by comparing uh, Different runs of, of the same build to, to to see what the differences were. So so yeah, if something something broke in, in version three that wasn't broken version two, uh, you'd be able to see uh, pretty quickly what what it was, um, uh, provided it's actually in source control. Uh, that's that's always uh, uh, that's that that can be an issue, but. Um, Again, that's the idea, right? It exposed it, the 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 tool would expose that uh, for you. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for for.